Hello everybody, it's been a while since I've uploaded anything on YouTube and a lot of that is just laziness, but uh, there's also been a lot of stuff going on as far as job changes, trying to start a small business, and yeah, just the list goes on and on. So I'm back today to make another video for you, and uh, this video is going to be about uh, a panhard bar on the Ram 1500 uh, two-wheel drive trucks, uh, the 2009 and up. In the last video, or the video before that, I showed you how to install an adjustable pan hard bar and I wanted to go ahead and explain why I did that and why it's a good idea to keep that in mind if you're going to change your ride height on this this truck or you know your ram. Um, it's actually a really similar suspension setup to the old F body cars, the 93 through 02 Trans Ams, uh, Firebirds and Camaros, so the same principles will apply here on that as well. So uh, the diagram is pretty simple. Uh, it's all labeled, but I'm going to go over it anyway. Uh, so you've got your rear axle. It's a solid rear axle. It's not independent or anything like that. And then you've got a coil spring on each side, which supports the weight of the frame and the rest of the vehicle. And uh, the frame rails sit on top of the coil springs, and the body sits on top of the frame rails. Uh, now, with coil springs and a solid rear axle, there's not a lot of uh, rigidity in the control arms themselves. Now, when you talk about a more traditional truck suspension, like the leaf springs that you see on a lot of trucks, um, it's a fantastic design because it's so simple. Uh, the ride quality isn't as great as it could be, but it's a simple design. You don't need control arms or a panhard bar or anything like that because the springs do this, the, the job of not only supporting the weight of the vehicle, but they also hold the axle centered in the frame. So it's simple and it works really well, uh, but I guess Ram, when they, or Fiat, however you want to say it, uh, when they were uh, designing the Ram, I think they were going for more of a car ride quality, which, you know, is, can be appreciated. It's a, it's a cool touch. So, because we're using coil springs and control arms, um, it's called, I guess, more of a multi-link kind of setup. Uh, there's not enough lateral support to keep the body centered over the rear axle, because if we didn't have the panhard bar here going between the frame and the axle, when you go to a hard corner or even just the crown of the road, the body's going to want to follow the, the force of, of the turn. It's going to want to go towards the outside of the turn uh, where the axle is tied to the ground by the tires. It's going to want to remain where it is following the track of the front wheels while the body's trying to kind of swing off to the side. So by tying the frame and the rear axle together with that panhard bar, uh, it keeps everything aligned on a center line and it, it makes everything stable, more safe, and just honestly doable. Um, the reason that you need to change your panhard bar if you're changing the ride height of this kind of suspension setup um, just has to do with the geometry of how everything kind of fits together. And to try to explain that, um, I've drawn this green line and this uh, red line. So. What those are is the green line is just like it says on the board, it's the stock bar reach. So when we're talking about bar, we're talking about the panhard bar. So if you can imagine that we take the bolt out where the panhard bar mounts to the frame rail, but leave the bolt in on the axle, and then we just lift the, the end of the bar up and down and pivot it on that point. This green line is the route that the mounting hole in the panhard bar will follow. Uh, it's going to go on an arch like that. Now, the frame rail mounting point, as we change the right height of the vehicle, whether we're lowering it and bringing the frame down closer to the axle, or we're lifting the vehicle and bringing the frame rail farther away from the axle, that's going to travel in a straight line, because that's just what we want. Um, we don't want to lift the body up into the side, that doesn't make any sense, so we want everything to go straight up and down. So, in my case, when I lifted my truck, the frame rail mounting point travels up along with the frame rail. So it goes along this, this red line here, um, just goes straight up. And then you can see when I try to reinstall the panhard bar, that now the panhard bar doesn't reach because the distances, these two, this uh, green dot with the black in the middle and the red dot with the black in the middle, when we go up to that new ride height, you can see that the panhard bar doesn't reach far enough anymore to mount into the frame rail hole. If we were to force it in there, what we're basically doing is dragging the body over to the uh, driver's side, which is going to cause our rear axle to stick out of the passenger side, 
um, and it's just going to throw off the whole balance of the vehicle. It's not anything inherently dangerous, but it's just, it's not optimal. Okay, you want everything centered up and balanced. That makes sense, right? Um, so now if you lower the vehicle and you're traveling, the frame rail is traveling straight downward as we lower the vehicle and bring the body and the frame closer to the rear axle, um, you can see that the opposite happens. This red dot on the bottom and the green dot on the, uh, the bottom, uh, you can see now it's too far off to the right side. So that pan heart bar is now too long. And again, if we force it in there, now we're pushing the body over to the passenger side and the frame over to the passenger side. Or we're going to have our axle sticking out of the driver's side. Um, so to remedy that, we use an adjustable pan hard bar uh, so we can make it longer or shorter. Uh, so if we're lowering the vehicle, we get a shorter bar, and we can fine-tune it with those adjustments. If we're uh, lifting a vehicle, we're going to want this going to be a little bit longer to reach over and, and to not throw everything off balance and shift things around. So it's, I mean, it's really simple. As you saw in the installation video, it's not hard to do, but it's something to keep in mind. If you're going to be lifting or lowering a Ram 1500 after 2009 with a coil spring suspension, um, it's pretty important that you, you install an adjustable pan hard bar to match. When you're shopping for one, keep an eye out because some of them will be marketed for lowered trucks, some of them will be marketed for lifted trucks, but it'll give you in the description, at least on the eBay listing that I bought from, uh, it's going to tell you uh, covers lifts from, you know, zero to four inches or, you know, the same thing lowering you know, zero factory ride height to three inches or four inches, however you want to do it. So just make sure that you're getting the right bar for the application and it should be good. Um, I know on the lifted trucks, there is a second option that you can use, um, and that's a bracket that mounts to the frame rail, and it lowers the mounting point on the frame rail. It, it brings it down to where it's, uh, the distance is about equal to a factory ride height so that you're not having to install a different pan hard bar. Personally, I would go for the adjustable pan hard bar because the dollar for dollar, they cost about the same. With a bracket, you've got to drill holes in the frame. Um, and, and bolt it in there and then even then there's no fine-tuning so you know if you got to make sure that you get the one for a three inch lift and not a four inch lift and then in my case my truck still squats in the rear even without a load in it so I need to lift up the rear more I would have to rebuy a new bracket to keep everything centered whereas with the adjustable pan hard bar all I got to do is just make it a little bit longer and center everything back up after I finish lifting the rear of the truck um, so that's really all there is to it. Just anytime you change the ride height on the rear of that truck or the rear of that car, if we're talking about the F-bodies, I doubt you're going to be lifting it. It'd be cool if you did, I guess. But, um, you know, especially uh, when I lowered my Trans Am, I put it like a two inch or two and a half inch lowering spring on it, uh, springs. And um, when you talk about a car that's that small, and especially when you're lowering it, if you start throwing this axle side to side because the pan hard bar length isn't right, it's pretty easy to get that tire to contact your fender, and that's not good. You're gonna you know cut up your tires and possibly damage your fenders and stuff like that. So anytime that you've got you know a rear axle, solid rear axle, coil springs, and a pan hard bar, and you're gonna change ride height, pay attention to it and just make sure that you do it right so it alleviates the, the stress and the problems that'll come down the road from trying to take a shortcut. So that's the video. Hopefully I can get in the habit of uploading some stuff more often. The truck videos seem to be pretty popular. You guys seem to like those, but I got some other things in mind. I appreciate you guys watching. Um, I'll see you guys next time, and I hope you have a blessed day. Like and subscribe uh, if you enjoy this kind of stuff. And uh, you know, thanks again for watching.